I'm Jennifer Cohen. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Verde Valley Experience. It's so great to have you with us. This is our last show of 2019. So exciting. It's been a great year. Looking forward to the next one. Of course, we have a great lineup of guests. All the things that we look forward to in the new year, we're getting prepared for that, including those things. We're trying to talk about the Sedona International Film Festival. Yes, one of our favorite things every year. It kicks off in February, but you do want to get your tickets now. Do not wait till February because everything will be sold out and you will be sad. Reva Stone, she's the operations manager for the 26th annual festival. She's going to be in the studio with us and she's going to tell us all about the best independent films from around the world, the shorts, the documentaries, the animated foreign student films, so much more happening at that festival, plus all the great stuff that is happening at the Mary D. Fisher until that happens. So there's just so much to talk about, plus volunteer opportunities. We're going to make you wait on that one because I know you want to hear about that. So again, pen and paper handy. As always on the VVE, you want to be prepared to write stuff down. Our next guest after that from Habitat for Humanity, Tanya Sims, the executive director, and Lisa Delight, the director of donor relations, will be in. They're going to talk about all the things that Habitat has accomplished in the last year. It has been the most spectacular year for Habitat. They're breaking all the records. Lots of firsts are happening. They're really excited to share with us all the things that are happening there. And as you may know, Habitat for Humanity is a nonprofit organization that helps families build and improve their homes and places for them to live. They believe that affordable housing plays a critical role in strong and stable communities, and I believe so, and they're doing it right in the Verde Valley. So we'll hear about that. Then we'll talk about the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. This is where activism gets inspired. It's very cool. It's been going on for years and years and years now. It's gonna start January 11th, and then again on the 18th. Laura Jones, the coordinator of the community engagement for the Friends of the Verde River will be here, along with Isaac Dudley. He's the business development coordinator. and while Wild and Scenic Film Festival is a call to action. Festival goers are transformed into activists who are dedicated to saving our planet. So it's a really cool festival. You'll hear about that. Then we'll go on location courtesy of our friends and our sponsors at Cat and Verde Links. And we'll go to the Verde River Greenway at Dead Horse Ranch State Park and talk with the park manager, George Christensen. Now the Greenway is the most amazing riparian area that runs through Dead Horse Ranch and it goes all the way down to Camp Verde. It's a very, very cool. George and I will stand next to it, talk about what you can experience while you're inside the park. Then we'll finish our show today with Walton Mendelssohn and Michael Kolwitz. It's the Stick EWI project in the moonlight. It's going to be released, their collaboration with Chapman Stick and then the electronic wind instrument. It's very, very cool. They're going to perform songs from their new album. First, you heard it first. It's not released yet here on the VVE, but we have to get started because I've talked way too much. <laughs> Reba, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Reba Stone, the operations manager for the 26th annual Sedona International Film Festival. Fabulous. Thank you for having me. I am excited to see you. I'm very excited to be here. I, it's a treat to be out of the office, out yeah. from behind the computer, and come over and talk to you today. I bet you have so much going on. There's so much to do with around the festival. Around the festival, and then we have our year-round theater, of course, that we're right. running too. That's so, true. And we are busting at the seams. So we have 530 events a year. Wow and some of them we take out of the office and take them to other stages, so that's when I get out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it has to be to come to see you. Ah, well, I'm glad <laughs> you did. So Mary D. Fisher is the most amazing theater in Sedona. If you haven't been there, it's wonderful, intimate, deluxe, comfy chairs. I love seeing films. I love seeing speakers there. I love all the events that you have. Everything is well thought out. It's not like, hey, we need something, there's a space. You think about everybody you bring in. You think about the integrity and the consciousness of all that happens within that theater, and it always impresses me. Well, thank you, thank you. And that all is uh, a byproduct of the festival. Mm -hmm. um, the festival for us starts May 1st. That's when we start taking submissions. Mm -hmm. Now the festival is actually February 22nd to March 1st, nine days, 167 films, filmmakers, a few movie stars sprinkled in there. A lot of fun because it is a festival, it is more, like a party with movies going on. Nice. So it's just, uh, it's a blast, it is a blast. And our screeners have been screening uh, frantically, going through thousands of movies that have been submitted. They have finished that up, and we now have tickets on sale. Yes, and you do want to get your tickets early. You don't want to wait. Right now, go online. If you go to SedonaFilmFestival.com, there's a list of everything there, mm -hmm. ways to buy. It's the best way to buy your tickets. Just buy them online. It's super easy, unless you want to call. You can want to speak to a human being. That's no problem. Give them a call. But SedonaFilmFestival.com, check it out. Buy your tickets now. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there are many ways to buy it. And we'd be happy if you don't, if you go to the film, uh, to the website, it's very explanatory. But a lot of people who haven't engaged in something like this before, call us. Mm -hmm. We'll happily walk through it, find out what would suit you best. Every level of purchase comes with different perks. Um, uh, serious film goers, they want to go into the passes. There's a platinum and gold. And it's easier to explain in person or on the website and our ticket passes are, that are come in 20 packs and 10 packs. Mm -hmm. And these all comes with special rights and gets you in early enough before the individual tickets go on sale. Mm -hmm. So you can get those movies scooped up in the mm -hmm. earlier than, uh, and then yeah. not be disappointed. Right, that's true because everything does kind of sell out. If you mm -hmm. wait, you know, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, there's something interesting that's happening this year, the Deconstructing the Beatles series. Tell us oh about my that. Gosh. Um, Scott Fryman is a composer, producer of music, a uh, historian of music, and a historian of the Beatles. And he has dissected it, deconstructed their albums, and he goes album by album or a historical event in the Beatles. And hmm. it's a series. And we actually played this last year, and it's kept selling out. So I asked Patrick if he would please show it again and we've been doing the same thing. It's been selling out. The third Monday of every month, people show up. Uh, we show it just one time. It's not repeated throughout the week, so mm -hmm. it's one of those events those that, uh, and we've kind of gotten to know each other. But he breaks down, he'll isolate tracks from it so you can hear Ringo playing a certain song, an mm -hmm. iconic song, and it lets you, explains on what made them geniuses back in the day. Mm -hmm. We have one coming up again on January 20th. It is the 1963 year. And f for Beatles people, they'll know that 62, they walked into EMI Studios, and that's where they met George Martin, who would become iconic in his own right. Mm -hmm. And over the next 18 months, they're going to create four number one songs, mm -hmm. two number one albums, mm -hmm. and he breaks down what's going on, not only in the studio, but maybe a little bit what's going on in their life. Wow. It's fast paced, it's exciting. I keep on learning things that I've never known about the Beatles, and I thought I knew a lot until wow. I started watching Scott. Wow. present this. A lot of fun. We have two more coming up and then another one in February, which is February 10th, I believe, because we had to move it up because of the festival. Because of the festival. Well, yeah. that's amazing. I know that there are so many Beatles fans out there that that just must be the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> well, it, it, it is when you start taking apart and get to hear. He has recordings from when they were the journeymen and John and Paul wow. when they were 14 and 15 that he's come across. Wow. So it, it's, uh, it's quite a treasure. My gosh, that's neat. And I can see that that you love it too, I can see. Yeah, it's, it's, like, wow, it's an audience participation thing. We're not talking. Well, uh -huh. sometimes we may be humming a couple of things, but oh, it, it's a fun sing-along. It turns into a sing-along. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. You know, audience participation is always great, and the Mary D. Fisher is definitely always open to that. Now, let's talk about volunteering for the film festival. I know that that's a huge part of the festival is your volunteers. How is that going this year? Well, it's uh, the festival is the largest event, annual event in North in Arizona. So thank goodness for volunteers and people who come together. The community, it is a community event. It takes everybody. We have 480 shifts to fill. So mm -hmm. to put it in perspective, we have a year-round theater that has volunteers. I fill probably 1,500 over the year to run a full-time theater. Wow. Nine days, we have 480 events and it's a good way to get into the festival because you get mm -hmm. to uh, see some films we have some perks we show you 10 films before they even start wow. so uh, training is more of a party training atmosphere um, I in we have software now that if you get on our email list mm -hmm. it goes out mid-January and I send out an email pre-email telling you when um, and you get to look at the six venues, you pick your time slot, mm -hmm. your day, where you want to go, and uh, it's just that easy. Wow. They can send it to my, me by email. I'm at operations at SedonaFilmFestival.com. Mm -hmm. That comes right to me. They can call me. All I need is the correct spelling of their name, 
mm -hmm. and their email, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just so much fun. It's actually how I got involved in the film festival. Wow! I came one time because I was a little intimidated by a film festival sure. to volunteer. That was it. Yeah, I hook, line, and sinker. Had the best time of my life, and here I am six years later. Oh my gosh, that's so. wonderful, Reba. Well, thank you for all the work that you're doing. I know having had Patrick on the show many times over the years, what goes into that festival is mind boggling. It's a year round planning and you never stop talking about the festival and planning on the festival. And it comes off beautifully every year. So great work. Keep up the great thank work. You. Yeah. Thank you. If you want more information, go to SedonaFilmFestival.com. Of course, you're going to get your tickets. The passes are on sale now, so go there now. We'll wait till the end of the show, but then go there. SedonaFilmFestival.com. We'll be right back with more of the experience, so don't go away. Regrow, repair, replace. Regenerative medicine is the process of creating living, functional tissues to repair or replace tissue or organ function lost due to age, disease, damage, or congenital defects. Dr. Forrest Lanchbury and the team at Sedona Regenerative Medicine specialize in finding relief for patients suffering from chronic pain. Contact Sedona Regenerative Medicine to learn about anti-aging medicines that will help your body heal itself. 928-282-2520 or SedonaRegen.com. Solid Rock Fitness is a one-on-one -on -one fitness studio specializing in fitness over 50. I train older adults of all fitness levels, from athletes and avid sports participants, to folks with chronic pain, to those recovering from surgeries. You and I will focus on strength training to improve overall muscle tone, core conditioning, balance, agility, flexibility, and nutrition. Mastery of these components of fitness will help you live your life to the fullest with confidence and competence. Start your journey toward better health with Ageless Touches Massage Therapy. Licensed massage therapist Richard Stevens uses the latest and best equipment to relieve scar tissue, electronic smog, and tinnitus. Ageless Touches does everything they can to work your issues down to the bone. Improve your path to better health with Ageless Touches Massage. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. It's now time to talk about Habitat for Humanity, everything they've done this year and everything they're looking forward to next year. I'm so excited. Habitat for Humanity is one of my favorite, favorite organizations. I've been knowing about these guys since I was a teenager. I love it. We have Tanya Sims, the executive director, and Lisa Delight, the director of donor relations sitting here. Thank you so much for being here. I can't wait. Where should we start? What, what's happened over the past year? It's too much. There's so many things to talk about. Uh, well, I'm going to let Lisa do more of the talking because, as you can tell, I'm getting over being sick and have a little bit of a scratchy voice, but she can, she can speak pretty well for our okay. organization. Great. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting us to be here today. I'm really excited to be here. And um, Habitat has done, like, show-stopping, never-done-before things this year, and wow. so we're really excited to brag about it. And um, one of the biggest things that we've done is we are building a triplex in Sedona. Mm -hmm. So it's um, three homes. Uh, two of them are three bedrooms and one of them is two bedrooms. Wow. So three families are going to be coming home next year. Wow. And um, we've never built three homes at once. It is the first time we've ever built homes that have two stories. Wow. And we are also slated to build, um, start a new house in Rimrock here within um, the next year. So that will put us at four homes in the fiscal year, wow. which we have never done in the Verde Valley. So we are like super celebrating the fact that we are um, knocking it out of the ballpark this you year. You are, congratulations, yes. that's fantastic. What do you attribute that success to this year? How is that possible that you, I mean, most people can't build one home in a year. Right. You're building four. Um, Tanya can jump in if she wants, but I'm going to say one of our biggest um, attributions is the people that we've partnered with. Mm -hmm. um, we've partnered with 1AZ for financials. We've partnered with the construction community, and we have so many people in the construction com uh, community that are mm -hmm. pulling in to help um, do this. And so I really think it's the people. It's the people knowing that we have... Mm -hmm. um, an affordable Great. workforce housing crisis, and yeah. we are in the process of solving that like one home at a time, and everybody's mm -hmm. excited to do that. So one home at a time has become three homes at a time and four wow. homes this year. Wow. So people really care about um, the community, and so they yeah. want to pitch in, and our volunteers are all just um, lined up to help. Mm -hmm. and. That's so great. it's the people. 
That's great, and I hear that you're working with Vets for Hire. That's an amazing organization as well, working with our veterans, and mm -hmm. that's just, it's a great fit. That is just yes. a perfect fit for you guys. Yes, and that's exciting because, um, like you said, the veterans um, give our, that partnership, that's allowing us to do more with our critical home repair program, mm -hmm. which primarily benefits the elderly and the veterans in our community, mm -hmm. helping them to stay safe in their homes that yeah. they already own. Refresh just, us on yeah. that that program, the critical home repair program. We talked yes. about that last year when you first started it up, Tanya, but how's that going this year and tell people exactly what that is because that's an amazing program. So we have been growing that um, in the last three years. It's a very new program, but that program is, um, again, income qualified, people apply for it it, they have to own their own home, but maybe they don't have the finances to keep it safe. So um, we build wheelchair ramps for those people who have handicap issues, or maybe they it, that's a recent development in their life. We do stairwells, we do, or excuse me, yes, staircases and stairwells, and we do um, roofs repairs and water damage repairs. So mm -hmm. it's people who, can't necessarily make the repairs on the home that they already live in. And so we have um, partnered with Vets for Hire and they're kind of our expert team leads and then volunteers come in. Um, and we have group volunteers, like we just had the hospital administrators came and helped. Um, we've had um, youth groups come and help. We've had um, Wells Fargo. So all of those people come in for two to three days and just knockout repairs right. and um, primarily elders and sure. veterans are who we're servicing with that program. Well certainly a lot of steps and wheelchair ramps and, and doors and you know things need to be fixed all the time yes. that need to be used to make life difficult so that's a, a great program that you guys are rolling forward. Now how's the new year look? What have you got planned? It is going to be our 25th anniversary in 2020. Wow. And so we plan on celebrating and showcasing everything that we're doing and um, that we're growing as much as possible for the whole year. We're hoping to just saturate people by, look how amazing we are and <laughs> we've lasted 25 years. Yeah. And so with that, we're going to ho have that home dedication should be coming up for the, that triplex. And we have four future homeowners already selected so that are right. waiting for homes and wow. um, at least three of them will be in homes within the next yeah. six months and then Yay. we're hoping to build. Wow, and, that's amazing um, how you can keep up. You guys just keep running, keep running and you've been renovating the ReStore this whole time, which yes. looks amazing. It's scary that you said 25 years. I've been shopping at the ReStore for 25 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you can keep Thank shopping. I work, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I find the best stuff. Oh my gosh. You know, and everybody who knows me knows I'm super thrifty. I'm like, I am all about reduce, reuse, recycle. Mm -hmm. And wow, if I can save some money on fabulous, my, oh, I have the most fabulous things. I really do. I mean, the best. I can't walk in there without spending we money. Great stuff. Yes. great stuff. And then for renovating homes and building homes. I built a house years ago out of stuff I bought a Habitat. It mm -hmm. was incredible. It was a Habitat house of, People you know, building supplies. of everything. And then housewares and paint and little nicky nacky things like, and screws. You know, you're going to go, you know, to tools. the box store and tools and buy them for twice as much. You can go into Habitat. It supports Habitat for Humanity. You know, that money stays local. It helps us program. I love it. I just go in there and just, you know, what can I buy? So we've had some great donors <laughs> um, donate to the ReStore. So that is another opportunity. People can donate uh, um, items and stuff to the ReStore. I did all, almost all my Christmas shopping there right. this year. I blenders, an umbrella for my patio. Nice. And just, yeah, a very eclectic. That's fantastic. We have a lot of uh, different items in the last six months because of a, a warehouse partner that we have. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for, uh, we've had brand new barbecues, brand new fireplaces. Um, oh, uh, we've got fire pits. We've yeah. had um, water heaters. We've got a gun safe wow. for goodness sake right now. Um, uh, yeah. Always have you know, different. Oftentimes, we have cool and different, unique furniture. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just a, a lot of different, um, um, I guess, donations. So our store Absolutely. is much different this year than it has been in prior years. Yes, so wider variety of things I notice, and a lot of new items. And how organized! Oh my gosh, the box stores aren't as organized as you guys are, and bright and clean. And you're working on paint. I hear mm -hmm. yes. you're going to be painted. We just did um, all, we, we got new windows, we have a new roof, wow. we have new heating and cooling. So wow. um, just nice and comfortable that will make, for your shopping yeah. pleasure. Mm -hmm. oh yes, my gosh. exactly. Okay, so you can shop, 
there at the ReStore, or you could donate items, uh, or you could do the tax credit program, Arizona tax credit program, to benefit Habitat for Humanity, yes. because it costs money to build these homes. This is mm -hmm. not cheap. Absolutely. Right? So you're always in the need for funds, for donations, and of course, how's the volunteering going? Do you need volunteers for things? Always. We always. always need volunteers, yeah. yes, we do. And okay. the, the nice thing, because of all the different things that we do, is we ha can hit a wide variety of volunteers. Mm -hmm. People who want to do office work, people who want to uh, do construction, people who only have a few hours to give. Right. Um, and it's just a place where even a few hours makes a huge impact. Makes a huge impact. If you want yeah. more information, go to vvhabitat.org, the Verde Valley Habitat for Humanity. Shop, donate, tax credit, support our wonderful community and what you guys have been doing. I'm applauding you. Congratulations on a banner year. Thank you for being here. We'll be right back with more of the Verde Valley experience, so don't go away. Breakthrough Medicine's Dr. Shada Sina offers comprehensive hormone testing and customized hormone therapy with a focus on lifestyle medicine, weight loss, allergy drops, brain and digestive health, seasonal detox, and nutrition. Dr. Sina is a referral physician for Suzanne Summers, specializing in bioidentical hormones for men and women. Breakthrough Medicine is located in Cottonwood's Hot Yoga Plaza. Call for a 15-minute complimentary new patient consultation, 928-649-0269, or visit online at Breakthrough medicine.com been hearing about the crazy benefits of cbd find out how cbd can help you at sedona's number one resource cbd sedona come in for a free consultation and let our trained medical staff help you find the perfect product for you pain relieving salves full spectrum oils honeys teas cookies and even cbd for pets ready to feel fantastic come on by cbd sedona today northern arizona thermal imaging uses a state-of-the-art medical digital camera to take a picture and create a map of the body's infrared patterns later interpreted by an md specially trained in reading thermography northern arizona thermal imaging is the leading medical imaging and proactive health care detecting early danger signs years before other tools finding early breast disease up to eight years before mammography may detect it schedule a scan with carol today northern arizona thermal imaging say yes to thermography and welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. It's now time to talk about the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, where activism gets inspired. This is really exciting. We have with us Laura Jones. She's the coordinator for community engagement of the Friends of the Verde River, and Isaac Dudley. He's the business development coordinator. So you guys are here to talk about this amazing festival. How many years now is it running? This is our second year, but uh, we're on what's called an on tour, so uh, festival. And so the Wild and Scenic Festival has been going on for many years in Northern uh, California. Mm -hmm. And then we, as an on-tour place, get to uh, curate a group of films that we then show in our local community. Wonderful. So, yeah. Well, that's a neat thing to get involved in. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's just good. so interesting because these films are specifically designed to inspire people, you know, yes. to create the urge to protect that's the right. environment and their area. So this year, uh, Laura and I and a couple other our teammates have got to specifically curate the list of, of films. So the, the Wild and Scenic Film Festival has all kinds of on-tour films, but we got to pick the ones that we felt were the best fit for our audience and, and our area. So wow, that's we're excited great. to share that with everyone. Neat. What are some of the examples? What's your favorite one, Laura? Uh, my favorite one is a movie called Seldom Seen Slight. Mm -hmm. And um, Ken Slight was a river runner in the Grand Canyon, and um, he is 85 years old, I think, now. Wow. And this is a movie um, about the filling of Glen Canyon for when they put up the dam and wow. um, uh, made Lake Powell. And wow. it's really inspiring because it is archival footage of the filling of the dam in the 60s. And it's a group of people who stayed on the river and in the lake as they filled it. Wow. So it's really exciting. And it's some archival footage of places you can't see anymore that are underwater. Wow. Um, so it was really, that was my favorite one by far. Yeah. Wow, how about really you, excited. Isaac? I had a few favorite ones. I mean, they're all so good. Um, you know, we also have films that are different lengths, too. So, you know, some of them I like were longer and some were shorter. One that I really liked was called Seeds of Hope. 
and uh, it's all about uh, you know bringing back some of the native culture around seeds and planting mm -hmm. it with the community and how that leads to a connection with our food and our environment and the seasons uh, and then my other favorite one was uh, a short uh, called Creek Sessions and it's all about this uh, young artist that goes to Indian Creek and uses uh, audio as a way to experience a landscape and creates oh. music based on these uh, recordings that Ooh. she takes. It's a very interesting way to think about interacting with nature. Oh, how very, very cool. Yeah, we're excited. I like that. Now, the festival is two days. It's January 11th and January 18th, two different locations. On the 11th, the Philip England Center for the Performing Arts in Camp Verde, mm -hmm. and then on the 18th at the Elks Theater in Prescott. Correct, and we have two uh, times. We have a 3.30 screening and a 6.30 screening. They're two different sets of film. Mm -hmm. um, Seldom Seen Slight will be the one film that gets shown at both because we really thought it would be powerful with the community. Mm. Um, people can buy an individual ticket, come to an afternoon or evening screening, or they can do a double feature. Um, adult tickets are 15, student tickets are 10, and under 12 is $5. So we're really wow. trying to encourage the family to come out, uh, to get families to come and, and help, see their ki help their kids see landscapes some that are very familiar, that are similar to around here, and ones that are just completely different, but mm. all you know, classic American sort of landscapes and uh, really beautiful places. Well, that's great. It's wonderful that you're able to keep it affordable for families. Right. Yeah. It's so important to educate our children, and this is a great way to do it. A film. Kids love to watch films. Yeah. You know, and if they can take away with, wow, well, that's really neat. You can really open their minds to, because they're the ones that really need to get to work yeah. on this protecting the environment thing. <laughs> we're excited about the locations. The Philip England Center for the Performing mm -hmm. Arts has a new screen this year, so they're really upping their game about performance and and for as a place. And the Elks Theater is just a beautifully redone classic theater in downtown Prescott, so that's also just a wonderful place to spend an afternoon and evening. Oh yeah, two really yeah. really great venues. And to put all this together, there's some some funding needing here, mm -hmm. so you must have had some sponsors. Yeah, we had a good handful of sponsors and local partners. Um, one of our other other nonprofit partners that we're working with currently is Prescott Creeks in Prescott to help uh, engage that community. But then as far as our sponsors go, uh, the Skyrock Inn of Sedona, a uh, new hotel up there has been a huge supporter of this event and other events of ours. Uh, Tierra Verde Builders as well and Dudley Photo. And then one other that we would like to mention is uh, Forever Our Rivers, which is mm -hmm. another uh, bigger river focus organization that we like to partner with as well. Wow, well that's really neat. This is very exciting that you're coming into the, the second year. What's different mm -hmm. this year? What did you go, oh, this is what we're gonna do this year. I think this year we had a little more time to curate what we wanted the festival mm -hmm. to look like. Mm -hmm. And we had a better idea doing it a second year. Um, so we were able to uh, I think pulled together a nicer mix of short films, long films, um, and ones that complement each other. I, I, I don't know if that's the right way to explain mm -hmm. it, but no, I absolutely. feel like we got to do a little more, we were got to be a little more particular this year about what we chose. So, ah. and again, as I said before, I think it's a really wonderful lineup. We do this with a group out of Northern California, and when we submitted our list of what we wanted to show, he was like, excellent, you guys have put together an excellent program. So I was excited to hear oh. that they, because they see lots of people do this around the country. So mm -hmm. the feedback from them was they thought our program is really spot on. Wow, that's so. fantastic. And yeah. how's everything going at the Friends of the Verde these days? Good, the river, we're gonna see if we have another exciting winter river season this yeah. year. We've already had a couple of days when the river's been really up with the with the uh, Thanksgiving weekend snow. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, the, war the river was up and then it uh, snowed and rained in Flagstaff, so it went really up very yep. quickly. Um, so we're excited. We have, uh, you know, the Verde River runoff is in March, so, mm -hmm. which unfortunately we had to cancel last year because the river, the water was so high. So right. we're gonna be watching that closely. Um, and then we're also getting ready for the um, Verde Valley Birding and Nature Festival at the end of April. It'll be our 20th festival at the end of April. So mm -hmm. we've got a lot of work to do. Well, that's, that's really <laughs> We're always wonderful. doing something, yeah. The Verde River is a wonderful thing. We go on location here in a little bit to the Verde River Greenway section in Dead Horse Ranch State Park. Yeah. And I was amazed it's November, there's birds singing. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just wonderful how beautiful and peaceful it is. It runs right by our building. Thank you for the work you guys are doing for the Verde River, for the environment and, and the experience 
expansiveness of this wonderful festival that you brought back. I just yeah. appreciate it. I know how much work goes into these things, and to have it repeated again, it, we're just so lucky to have you. Yeah, we're excited. You know. Very excited. It's a really cool project to be part of. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've been involved now. This is you've been yeah. here for a couple of years too. Uh, now. Yeah, about a year and a half now, uh, and uh, for all of our. Uh, visitors, all of our attendees today. I'm the business development coordinator at Friends, and so uh, I get to work with about 40 local businesses to raise money for on-the-ground conservation projects. Right. And uh, so, just about a month ago, we got to finalize our grant or our grant cycle for that program. And uh, so we'll be giving out $10,000 for community development projects wow. with uh, the town of Clarkdale and the city of Cottonwood this year. Super. I think that's amazing. Yeah. That is really awesome. Well, thank you yeah. guys so much. Always good to see you, Laura. Check out verderiver.org if you want more information. And check out the Wild and Scenic Film Festival that is happening on January 11th and January 18th. We'll be right back, so don't go away. Show your customers how much they matter to you. Follow up with a real card in just 60 seconds with Send Out Cards. Send Out Cards makes it easy for busy professionals to leave a memorable impression. Stay in touch with a simple one-step process from your phone or computer to their mailbox. Call Judy today at 928-202-2557. That's 928-202-2557. Award-winning Sound Bites Grill is an entertainment restaurant located in Uptown Sedona at the Hyatt Pinion Point Resort. Open for lunch and dinner, featuring fresh fish, all-natural hand-cut beef, even a full vegan menu. Family-friendly, open 11.30 to 9, late dining on Friday and Saturday. Sound Bites Grill has some of the best views of the Sedona Red Rocks. Offers world-class entertainment, food, fun, and music. Experience. We're now out here at the Dead Horse Ranch State Park in Cottonwood with park manager here, George Christensen. We're standing by the beautiful Verde River, which is running quite nicely because of all the precipitation we've had so far this winter. But this area, George, you say, is called the Verde River Greenway, correct? Correct. Okay, can you explain that? Yeah, this was created <clears throat> a number of years ago as a state natural area, and it was created so that uh, there were some areas that could be protected and preserved along the river and have those opportunity to have these easements for trails to go along the river, both river trails and land-based trails. And uh, it's a really great opportunity. I mean, it makes almost a thousand acres uh, between starting at Tuzigoot Bridge and going as far as down as Beasley Flat in Camp Verde. Uh, the State Parks Board a number of years ago uh, decided to expand the range beyond just Cottonwood and take it all the way down through Camp Verde when we acquired some more properties. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. What does that mean for the area? It is now a designated, designated natural site? It's designated as a state natural area, so it doesn't have a lot of development on it, a lot of impact. It's, it's less uh, hardened trails and uses, but it's certainly open to the public. It's a great place for come and view wildlife. Oh my gosh. Um, there's river otters and raccoons, everything. We've seen the tracks here along the oh, river. Yeah. And uh, just a nice place for people to get access to the river. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very convenient. Of course, we've got trails next to it. And there's more animal prints than human prints, I notice. It's just covered 
There's animal prints. What type of animals do you have here? Well, we've got a lot of white-tailed deer, a few mule deer that come down and inhabit this area. Of course, there's always bobcats and coyotes and foxes for your predators. And like I mentioned, the raccoons and, and um, there's uh, a lot of raccoons and uh, river otters that come and come between the park, Dead Horse Ranch, and the river. Oh, yeah. And, they uh, go fishing. They go fishing. <laughs> they know when the trout are stocked in the lagoon, so oh, they come out of the river and head to the lagoons. <laughs> <Little> stinkers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've so, talked about the fishing before. The fishing here yeah. is absolutely amazing. All kinds of great fish in the different lagoons. We thought today we'd try something different with the Verde River Greenway. And the, the birds as well. I mean, you may not be able to pick them up on camera, but we're hearing all these different bird calls. So this area is just, um, it's just overflowing with wildlife. It is a great place to view birding. Uh, that's why the Verde Valley Birding and Nature Festival is held in the park each year at mm -hmm. Dead Horse Ranch. And then they come down along the greenway here and be able to see a lot of great birds. You have this great cottonwood, this the Fremont cottonwoods and the Gooding willows. They're only 20 such places in the world that those are found. And they're wow. right here along the river. So wow. that makes a really nice, uh, opportunity to see those gallery and see all your other riparian species that come along with the river as well. Right. And now we're in winter, so the, the trees are mostly de-leaved and you can really see more down the river, which I think is cool. But even saying that, still, there's still tons of wildlife here. So it's not like something you've got to do in the spring, or you've got to do in the summer. This is a year round attraction if, if you're into nature. Yeah, it, it's a great place to also be able to come see the beavers hard at work. Uh, there's a lot of beaver activity in the Verde. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see all along here where there's trees that have been cut and uh, they always are making their lodges and bank denning. And so it's a great place to see the wildlife. Well, that's great. And, yeah, yeah, the term busy as a beaver, you know, yeah. that's true. And I yeah. can imagine they're just having the best time on the river with all this different woods and everything that they can build stuff. And that, that's just something neat you don't think about because we're right here in the middle of Cottonwood. You know, we're, we're right here in the city and yet you come here and you feel like you're really far away from everything. You don't hear anything but the birds and the rushing of the river. It's just absolutely stunning out here. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, like say, to see the bald eagle and uh, all your different hawks, your common black hawk. It just nests up the river a little ways from here. so provides a really nice, unique environment for all the wildlife. Wow. Now, which trails, I know there's, there's so many trails in the park, which specific trails do we need to go on in order to experience the Greenway? The two best opportunities to view the Greenway is to do the Verde River Greenway Trail, which starts at our lower Owl Road parking lot. And that's about 2.1 miles, and it takes you along the river and comes up back behind the Third Lagoon at Dead Horse Ranch. State Park, and then if you're on the Cottonwood side, you have the uh, Gel Trail, which goes from the Old Town Cottonwood down to Riverfront Park, and that's about just about one and a half miles of trail on that side of the river. It gives you good access to it. Nice. So uh -huh. if you want to access this side, you want to come through Dead Horse Ranch State Park, obviously, but the Jail Trail at the end of Main Street, anyone can access anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's cool. And then there's some nice trails that go also between Tuzi Goot. Uh, National Monument and Dead Horse along the river there, the Hickey Ditch Trail mm -hmm. that follows a lot of the, our ditch system that oh, flows yeah. into the lagoons. Well, that's great. So there's well, access. More information can be found at AZ State Parks. And you can go there, look up online, you'll find all kinds of different things. If you search Dead Horse Ranch State Park, it's going to come up. Of course, you can type in Verde River Greenway on your search bar and you're going to come up with all kinds of cool things. George, what a neat place you have here. I know we say that every time, but you're a really lucky guy. <laughs> We really enjoy working out here and being in it. Yeah, I yeah. bet. It's we'll be right back with more of the experience, so don't go.
This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! Very nice. Walton Mendelssohn, everyone, and Michael Kowitz. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Our pleasure. That's Thanks for great. having us, Jennifer. And, and you heard it first because it hasn't been released yet. <laughs> the Stick Iwi Project, due out January 10th. Iwi stands for Electronic Wind Instrument. Yep. I have been the maestro today. Thank you. Yes, that, that thing is incredible, Walton. Does it, it sound like all well, kinds I of have different a, things? I have a synthesizer, mm -hmm. so whatever's in that... Hopefully I can sound like <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. I, I love it. And wow, do they work together. They do. They do. Beautifully. And, you know, here's the ironic thing, is both of these instruments were invented in the mid-70s mm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. Both wow. of them. And they're both very little known, obscure. Uh-huh. Almost it's no wonderful. one's ever seen or played one. Well, it's sure. very, uh, well, some people play them. Well, some, yeah. <laughs> just not, <laughs> not, not, not that many. Wow, but that was what makes it cool. Yeah, that, yeah. because y your ears go, oh, fresh, something new, something we haven't yeah. heard. Yeah. This is a wonderful blending, mm -hmm. and I love that on your you wrote every single one of these songs. Yep, T together we did. This is just fantastic. I love it. And, and already you're a silver medal winner oh. and you haven't even, go, you haven't even been released yet. The Global Music Award. Oh. It's, it's very prestigious. It, um, it receives thousands of albums uh, from uh, almost 100 countries around the wow. world. So to win a silver medal at the Global Music Awards, even before the release of the album. Wow. Not bad. 
have been. We're, <laughs> we're very pleased, <laughs> and not to mention shocked. That's, well, uh, we're not shocked. I oh, mean, okay. You know, well. we, we know you guys. We've had both okay. of you on Thanks. the show before, and always, always impressive. You're having a big party, a big kickoff for the uh, release of the album on January 10th at the Mary D. Fisher Theater. That's yep. correct. Mm -hmm. We do. Matter of fact, the uh, ticket links are up right now. Just go to the uh, Sedona International Film Festival. Yes. It's exactly. a Friday night, starting at 7 o'clock. It nice. is the official release date of our album. So wow. we wanna and we're going to try to be there. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, okay. You won't be the same without you. <laughs> I'm going to be there. I know. <laughs> that song that you just wrote, which one is that? What's that That one, one is titled Summer River Day. Mm. And imagine mm. yourself, it's the mid of August mm. in Cottonwood, and you're going mm. down to the Verde River for the day. Mm -hmm. Ice chests, kayaks, lounge chairs, lots of umbrellas, and just uh, cool off. It's a, nice. it's a, it's a real peppy... Um, kind of happy jazz yeah. tune. Yeah, I we shortened it a little bit for the show, oh, so it's yeah. actually longer on the okay, album. But oh, the river's album. longer. Yeah, <laughs> it's a longer picnic yeah. for sure. Yeah, I could imagine floating around in in a net or two listening to that. It just felt like that <sighs> mm -hmm. refreshing in kind of music. Middle of summer when yeah. it's just blazing. Oh, wow, that's oh, too man, fun. Just... There's 12 songs on this, and yep. and I love this French windshield. That sounds dirty. <laughs> well, I was thinking <laughs> French, French romantic movies with the windshield wipers going back and forth and back and forth. Oh, yeah, yes. That was the thought. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah. That's very, very clever. Mm -hmm. And we've got to give you props, Michael, for your, your Christmas album that's oh, doing amazing you. that was it's, also it's, just released. It's on, it actually, it was released uh, just a month ago. It's wow. available everywhere on uh, Amazon, iTunes, Apple Music, CD Baby, Bandcamp, and about 50 other places I wow. don't remember. It's also on Spotify mm -hmm. and Pandora Nice. if you're uh, a streaming Selling listener. Time. It's called Santa Plays the Stick, mm -hmm. and it's 15 uh, yeah. Christmas songs. 11 are traditional songs, and I wrote mm -hmm. uh, four originals myself. Wow, four original Christmas? That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing, and that's getting lots and lots of playtime. Perfect it really time is. to have that released. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Wow, I'm mm -hmm. just so impressed with you guys. <laughs> it, it feels to me like you just whipped this out. Last time I saw you, I don't remember this. All of a sudden, it was like, "Hey, we yeah. got a new album." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Whoa, wait! Last week, what happened?" <laughs> we we met October twelfth, two thousand eighteen, at the mm -hmm. Sedona Hub. Ah, um, wow. Joe Walt, and I were playing first. Right. Yep. Walt was us. playing with Joe Berger. Yep. Great singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. And I was after them, and and I heard Walton play, and I was blown away. He sounded yeah. fantastic, yeah. and I just said. Hey, come on up here. You're all set up. Why don't you come up here and you know just play a couple songs? We'll see what we can, we can do. And we played two or three songs. We made them up on the spot. We had a standing. And it was magical. It really was magical. Standing ovation. People wow. loved it. They go, "Wow! Why didn't you guys do a record?" And so a few weeks after that, we said, "Let's do it." And wow. We spent about nine, ten months. Uh, recording, engineering, all that stuff. And That's incredibly it fast. Yeah. And it so. usually takes a lot longer to put a, a, an album of this quality. I mean, that mm -hmm. takes a long time. You guys just like, it just came out. That was we wonderful. We put a lot of work into it. Yeah, I bet. We'll just leave it at that. I bet. We don't have to tell your listeners how long it took. But oh. I assure wow. you, <laughs> we put our heart and our soul into it. And, and it was fun. It really it's important is. to it say. Sounds we good. Of course, yeah. of course. I can tell by both of you, you're you're completely relaxed and at ease playing with each other, mm -hmm. and it just kind of floats together. It, it's a match made in heaven for sure. So I yeah. bet that the the recording time and the writing it just flowed. The yeah. two instruments, they just they they fit like gloves That's into incredible. one another because. How neat! Yeah, it's been it, fun. Both of these instruments have such an unlimited potential mm. the, the Chapman stick you know yeah so many amazing sounds amazing instrument out of that. that you can do so much with yeah. and the beauty of the electronic wind instrument is all these little sensors uh, throughout the instrument can detect all of the expressive elements oh. and nuances that oh. you would get from a, a saxophone yeah. a flute oh. an wow. oboe any type of a wind instrument wow so in, fact, have the, in fact the interesting thing is if you don't think the instrument, it doesn't it doesn't work well. Uh -huh. So you actually have to think because that changes your, your your embouchure, your throat, your diaphragm. Wow! So it's a, I have no idea how I've taken it apart once. Oh! 
<laughs> I can't. I have no idea where the magic comes from. Yeah. You looked inside. To I see did if look you could inside. Find the yeah. magic. Lots of little pieces. All the keys white fall ball off. of energy, maybe. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Fairy dust yeah. and all kinds of stuff hidden mm -hmm. in there. It is really amazing. Yeah. You know, two instruments that that look simple yet can sound like 15 different things, mm -hmm. and then depending on how you play, such skill has to go into yeah. creating those nuances that you mentioned. That's got to come from you. And and as you say, you have to visualize. I'm playing a yeah. saxophone right now, and out comes a saxophone. And somewhere along the line, I think I had lessons, but I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Lessons well, are always good. Walt is, Walton is such a fantastic player, and he has played this instrument almost 30 years now. Wow. Yeah, but almost 30. Yeah. 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 It's uh, wow. that's a long time for an you know an instrument that delicate mm -hmm. that really requires a. a it really requires a high level of skill to make yeah. it sound that beautiful. Well, of course. Because when I close my eyes and I'm playing with them, mm -hmm. I could swear there's someone standing right next to me with a violin. Right. Or at least an Ely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're, you're nothing to snuff at either, you know. Thanks. With this, I couldn't make that thing oh, squawk for anything, oh, but thanks. you make all kinds of beautiful things come out yeah. of that. Thanks. The Chapman stick is an incredible instrument, and it was made for you. Because it just, it's been my yeah. enduring passion for over 40 mm -hmm. years yeah, now. That's great. I still remember the very first time I heard it, I was hooked. I, yeah. I could not believe that mm -hmm. the inventor Emmett Chapman could create so much music with what amounts to a two by four with strings on it. Yeah. But, uh, and over the years, he's refined it in so many uh, little ways mm -hmm. that the uh, instruments he makes now are just as good as it gets. And oh. there's still only about 8,000 of these wow. in existence. The wow. Musical Instrument Museum down in Phoenix, they've got uh, eight of them on display. Wow, that's it's a fantastic. beautiful exhibit. Just but I know, it's a beautiful museum if you get a chance to check that out. And of course, check these guys out on January 10th at the Mary D. Fisher Theater. Go online, get your tickets, because you want to experience this. You're going to want to get one of these, of course. Amazon, CD Baby, Spotify, all the same, all over the place. Yeah, the day of release, we'll, have, uh, we'll be autographing CDs right there. Great. Um, that's so it, it won't be available on those other ones until like the following day. Okay. But the uh, Santa Plays the Stick is out right now and okay. it's doing great. Super. Santa is happy. <laughs> Why he called me He's just the happy. other day. Did he? Did he? <laughs> what You're, song are you going to play next? We're going to play the title track. It's oh, a beautiful piece. Yes. It's titled In the Moonlight. Very nice. And just just think of those nice. warm summer nights with a full moon. Mm -hmm. oh, it's just it's Beautiful. magic. So. Thank you both so much for well, thank Thanks you. for having us. Really, thank it was good really luck our on pleasure. everything. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The Stick Ewe Project. Make sure you check it out January 10th and then look for it online after it's released. Thank you all so much for watching the Verde Valley Experience. As always, we appreciate it. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season and a blessed and prosperous new year. We'll see you again.